Hello, and welcome back to this video. We're gonna talk about the constant E. And the constant E, which is on your calculator, is an irrational number, and it's a suitable base for both the exponential and logarithmic function. It can be approximated using this expression, one plus one over n to the n power. And for n is pretty much a sufficiently large number, or can be. And we can use the limit concept to formally define e as either of the following two limits here. We have e now is equal to the limit of 1 plus 1 over n to the n power as n approaches positive infinity. Alternatively, e is equal to also the limit of 1 plus s to the 1 over s power as s approaches 0. And as you note this here, if s is equal to 1 over n, then n is approaching positive infinity, and s also is implied as approaching 0. Now, when we look at this here, both limits are equal to some value, which is irrational. And that value is 2.718281828459. And actually, this is going to be dot, 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 because actually this goes on and on and on. That's an irrational number. However, we can prove, that, or we can actually look at this and prove this uh, situation is happening in this sort of way. And if we look at this graph, and if we look at the values here, first we have, we want to look at basically as S has the values of negative 0 0.5, negative 0.2, negative 0 0.1, negative 0.01, and of course zero, and 0 0.01, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.5. Now, when we plug these values into 1 plus s to the 1 over s power, we plug these values in, this is what we'll get as our output. So these are our input values, and this is our output values. And notice what's happening here. Notice what's happening. This is basically getting closer and closer and closer to what? When it gets closer, now remember we talked about this in class. As these values get closer and closer to zero, right? As S approaches zero. So in this case, S is gonna be approaching zero. So when S is approaching zero, on the x-axis, it's going to be approaching some value on the y. So when it approaches some value on the x-axis, it approaches some value on y. Getting closer, closer, closer. And actually, if I just take this and draw this up, and these points being closer, 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 that means that every point that's on the x that's getting closer to zero is getting closer here on the y. It's getting closer here on the x is getting closer on the y. Getting closer on the x is getting closer on the y. Getting closer on the x is getting closer on the y. Getting closer on the x is getting closer on the y. So you see my point. And this is coming from the right hand side. Now, if we come from the left hand side, the same, uh, same concept. We're getting closer. This is zero, this being zero. And we're approaching zero. So if, it's get, if we're approaching zero, from the left hand side, as we get a value on the x, we're going to get a value on the y. As we get a value on the x, we're going to get a value on the y. As we get a value on the x getting closer to zero, we're going to get a value on the y. Getting closer to some value up here. And as that happens, as you see right here, this value 0.5, or coming from the left, 0.5 here, negative 0.5, you're going to get a value of uh, 4. Negative 0.2 you're going to have 3.0518. So this is happening. As this is getting closer and closer, 
this is getting closer to some value here, and it's said to be very difficult to find in this sense right here. But this thing is getting closer and closer to 2.73, actually 2.7, 1828, 1828.5459. So it's getting closer. So as these points are getting closer to zero, it's getting closer to zero a bit. And as you see right here, is getting close to some value here. This is maybe two, and this is two. This is like 2.71 something. So when it's getting closer and closer down here, it's getting closer and closer here. And this is that point from the left hand side and from to the, uh, from the right hand side. So that point is like 2.7 uh, 1828 1828459 and so forth and so on. So you see the value is coming from this side, as you see, from the left hand side, and these values are coming from the what? From the right hand side. So as you see, it gets closer, again I keep repeating this, as it gets closer to zero, approaching zero, is getting closer to whatever value it is up here. And that value is E right here, so and that value E is 2.7182818284459. So this is very, very clear, a clear example of how limits work. And of course, we talked about another particular scenario problem in class. However, this is a, another problem using more or less the exponential function e, so if you will. So. If you just copy these concepts down and copy this graph and understand what the graph is doing, this is how things are compounded over time. And we'll talk about these things a little bit later on in the video as we go and talk about a particular problem uh, dealing with uh, compound interest and also two of the formulas that we're going to be speaking of. Okay, we see everybody should understand this concept here. Again, as the limit approaches zero, as S approaches zero from the left hand and the right hand side, wherever it's approaching zero from this side, and it's approaching, it's gonna, it's gonna be approaching some value on the y-axis as well. And as we see, this is what we have right here. So this is what these zero, this as you see it approaches zero here, it's gonna be approaching E right here as your output. Value. Follow me and we'll talk about another problem. And basically, we're going to be talking about simple interest, right? For in compound interest. What I was saying earlier about okay, A is equal to P plus P times R times T. And if you factor this out, this is what we get. Uh, the principal times 1 plus the rate times the time, as you see right here. And then the compound interest was uh, A is equal, the amount is equal to the principal times 1 plus the rate over uh, N raised to the N times T, right? And so let's look at a, a particular example problem, which you'll see how, well, of course, the limit. However, we want to compute A for several values of N in the table right here, 2A. Look, before I continue on reading this per se, and this is a good shot of this, but let's go over here. When we compute A, A, so we're actually going to plug in or substitute a 1N for N here and there, and then we're going to get $112.36. And then we're going to talk about, that's annually, right? That 1 represents an annual, right? And so the value 2 is represented semi-annually, so when we put that in there, it's going to be compounded twice a year. That's going to be whatever this value is uh, over, this is going to be 2. N is going to be 2. We're going to substitute 2 in for N and 2 there, right? And then, of course, 4. We're going to substitute 4 for quarterly. We're going to substitute uh, 12 for monthly and 52 for weekly. Daily is 365 and hourly is 8,760. Now, as you go, as we go along, what do you notice here? It's $112, $112, $112 all the way through, isn't it? But let's look at this. 
As we compute A for several values of N in the table 2 right here, 2A, the biggest gain appears in the first step, see? In the first step is the biggest gain there. It jumps, right? And then the gain slows down as N increases. So as N increases, the gains will slow down. So as this increases, these numbers get bigger and bigger, this slows down. So the amount of A appears to approach, now approach, $112.75 as N gets what? Larger and larger. So see, here we have a limit problem again, basically, with the uh, compound interest, right? So this is a good example of, of limits. So as the numbers increase, 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 the, the value of the compound interest or the amount is going to what? It's going to, it gets closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to $112.75. Now, let's look at something real quick. Let's keep P, R, and T fixed in the equation. And here we have the limit is equal to P times 1 plus R and T to the N times T as N approaches positive infinity. So basically, as we analyze this, I'm making a derivation. We're doing a derivation here of something that you'll see that will be created at the end of the problem. At the end of this little uh, derivation, you're going to see something created, basically. So what we have is we take r divided by r, and we're going to insert it into the exponent. And of course, what we get from there is n over r times r times t. So we plug that in here, and of course we get n over r times r times t. So what we're going to do is let s equal r or n. So in that case, if that's the case, which means if n over r is what it is in this particular case now, and we say let s equals r or n, the reciprocal of that is n over r, we're going to say that n over r is going to equal 1 over s. So in this case here, we got r over n here in this particular case, which is going to be s. But then when we take the reciprocal of that and become n over r, that's going to be 1 over s. So that's where that comes from there. You see that? And then as we continue to look at this, 1 plus s to the 1 over s power, the power of that, raised to the r times t. Look at this middle value right here. What does this actually mean? From the uh, limit property, from over there on that board, remember, we just discussed it a few seconds ago, that's going to equal to e. So this here, inside here, is going to, which is represented by that, is going to equal to e. So a is going to equal to p times e to the r times t, which e is that 2.71 value, but that p times e to the r times t is this thing being compounded what? Continuously. So this is what's being created. See? This is a continuance of money being compounded continuously. So you, whenever you do a problem, if it's talking about the compound interest over a particular time, you know, then of course you use this formula. But then when it says when something is compounded continuously, you use this formula, A is equal to P times E to the R times T. So this is a derivation of this formula here, and this is how this formula is, uh, is basically derived. So you just have to know that and remember that over the time. It's great to know derivations of, of formulas and things like that. It's awesome, but um, you, you, for you know, business people, you can basically understand and know that A is equal to P times either the R times T. That's very important for you to know that also A is equal to P times 1 plus R over N raised to the N times T. Compound interest compounded continuously is going to be considered that A is equal to P times E to the R times T. So it's very important. These two formulas are very, very useful in the business field. So let's look at a problem real quick, another problem. And this problem is dealing with compound interest when something is compounded continuously. So you're going to use this formula here. So how long will it take an investment of $5,000 to grow to $8,000 if 
it is invested at 5%. Compound it continuously. So you wouldn't use that formula, you would use this one here. So the amount is $8,000, which goes in for A, and then is equal to P, and which is the, the principal amount there, and which is the investment. And here we have times E raised to what? The 5%. So the 5%, when you actually move the, you got to move the decimal over two places to the, to the left. So this will help you. You want the rate is always in decimal form. Remember that. So whenever you calculate compound interest or anything of that sort, understand that your percent has to be converted to decimal. So this is going to be 0.05t. Now look at this very closely. We have to solve for t. In this particular situation, this is an exponential function, is it? So the variable is pretty much the exponent, right? So we're going to have to isolate t. So we'll show you how to do that. So when we take 5,000 of both sides, we get e to the 0.05t, which is equal to 1.6. Now, in this particular case here, there's no way of us simplifying this to get both of the bases of this form to be the same. Remember, we talked about this in an earlier video. If I, uh, a to the x is equal to a to the y, meaning that when both of the bases are the same, the exponents will become what? I said both of the uh, equations or expressions equal to each other, and you'll be solving for the variable. But in this particular case, there's no way that we can simplify this expression to have both bases to be the same. So what do you do? You take the log or the natural log of both sides. And when you take the natural log of both sides, you apply the properties, right? You apply the property, the log, natural log of a to the r, which is equal to r times the natural log of what? A in this particular case. So you'll bring, this will come over, you see, this will come over here, this will go down here. So this becomes what? 0.05t times the natural log of e is equal to the, the natural log of e of, of 1.6. So this is what we have. This is the expression. And remember, the natural log of e is equal to what? One. Well, 0.05t times 1 is uh, 0.05t. So once you have that expression, now we can solve for t comfortably now. And so we divide 0.05 to both sides, and here we have the natural log of 1.6 divided by 0 0.05, and what do we come up with? We come up with t is equal to what? 9.4 years. So it will take uh, 9.4 years for the investment to grow to $8,000. So if you see that. So 9 point, approximately 9.4 years. So this concludes this segment of the exponential functions. And we talked about the constant E. We talked about the uh, compound interest and also when something is continuously compounded, what formulas and what expressions to use. And we'll have future problems to come. Stay tuned for more videos.